For the past 35 plus years, the BMW M3 has been known as the quintessential super sports sedan in which all the other manufacturers try to benchmark. Just look at Audi, look at Mercedes, look at Lexus, look at Jaguar, and even look at Alfa Romeo. However, a few years ago, a little pesky competitor in the form of the Tesla Model 3 Performance came out, and it really stole a lot of the M3's thunder because it delivered all-wheel drive grip, because it offered zero to 60 in the low three-second range, and because it was an all-electric car that just delivered the kind of performance and futuristic driving feel that a lot of people didn't realize they were looking for. However, for 2022, BMW is doing the unthinkable because they finally added all-wheel drive to the M3 for the first time in its three decade plus long history. So as you can see this week, BMW has loaned me this very, very bright yellow 2022 M3 competition with xDrive. And the big question I want answered, has BMW managed to find their mojo and remind everybody that they build the ultimate driving machines with this new all-wheel drive M3? Stay tuned to find out. So if you guys are big fans of BMW, you'll know that M stands for motor. So this wouldn't be a proper M3 review without first talking about the powertrain in this new generation M3. And BMW builds some of the best internal combustion engines in the business, and that's cer certainly the case here for the latest generation M3. This is the company's three liter twin turbocharged straight six cylinder engine. So this is a, a double turbo, a twin turbo, as opposed to the single turbo that you find in something like the M340i. And of course they do offer two different power outputs. The base M3 makes 473. This one, however, has had the wick turned up to deliver 503 horsepower and 479 pound feet of torque. Those figures are without a doubt conservative. BMWs tend to always underrate their engines and they make basically that power at the wheels. So probably this car is making around 550 horsepower. The big story, however, of course, I mentioned it a few times, is now you can get it with their company's X-Drive all-wheel drive system, and it still gives you the ability to completely shut off the front axle so you can do it, you can put it into a rear drive mode for whenever you wanna do some tail out shenanigans and drift this car around. The downside about the all-wheel drive version is it only comes with the eight-speed torque converter automatic. It's built by ZF. It's one of the best transmissions in the business. We'll talk about that later on as you get into the driving scene. And fuel economy actually is roughly the same. It's rated at 16 in the city, 22 on the highway. The highway figure went down by one MPG as opposed to the rear drive model with this powertrain, so it's negligible. You may as well just go for this model. Um, it is about a $4,000 upcharge to go with all-wheel drive but it will improve the zero to 60 time by 0.4 seconds. BMW quotes it at 3.4 seconds. And it also has increased the weight by a rather negligible 100 pounds. As this one sits, it weighs in at just over 3,900 pounds. Now, shining the hood, let's take a look at the styling really quickly of this car because I've shown you guys this generation M3 quite a few times. And this is the first time that I'm seeing it in Sao Paulo yellow. This is like almost like a highlighter greenish yellow color. It really stands out on this car. It turns heads everywhere I take it. I'm not entirely sure if it's for a good reason. Maybe people really like the color and the wheels until they see the grill. I will admit that the grill is slightly growing on me. As I showed you guys earlier, BMW's full laser headlights are standard, but this grill here in M3 competition form, you can see has the uh, night package or it has the blacked out package here. The M3 grill right there is also blacked out. You have their company's full laser light adaptive LED headlights with LED turn signals, eight daytime running lights, low and high beams, no fog lights, but you can see my tester also has a carbon fiber package that adds carbon fiber to the front splitter uh, to those, those functional air intakes, of course, for this big engine. And you can see the hood also has this very interesting like bulge here, the twin power dome bulge that really goes well with the front end. Although I do think this car looks better when you guys have the European front plate installed. It's really nice, however, to see it without a front license plate. I think the car looks even more terrible whenever you see it on a vehicle or in a vehicle that's registered in a state that requires a front plate. Now at 189 inches long, this is a big vehicle. It's about the same size as like an M5 from a few generations ago. Its wheelbase is 113 inches long. So it is, a, remember, a much larger car nowadays. The wheels, you can see my tester has like this optional gray finished five spoke wheel with the standard brakes. You can see the calipers are also black painted. I would probably prefer to get these blue painted and these aren't really my favorite wheel. You can see my tester has Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. 
There are two 75s in the front, 19 inch wheels wrapped two, two 85s in the back on 20 inch wheels. So you still have a staggered wheel setup, uh, even though this is an all wheel drive car. Now with the carbon fiber package, you can see it also adds carbon fiber mirrors. It also has a carbon fiber roof that lowers the center of gravity. However, if you guys want a sunroof, you're gonna have to give that up. And then from this angle here, I think this is the best angle of the current generation M3. Although I will say that I do not like how they didn't kind of flare, they flared out the fender flares. Obviously they had to make this car wider, but the door doesn't have the same kind of flare. So it looks obviously, uh, like the car has a bulging body, which some of you may like that, some of you may, may not. Now looking at the back here, there is no indication on this car whatsoever to tell you that this is an all-wheel drive version, which is really freaking shady of BMW to not put an all-wheel drive badge on this car. Nobody will know that it's all-wheel drive. They'll, th they'll think you just have the rear drive model. You can see it just says M3 competition here. This is the badge that gives this away, of course, as the higher performance version. You have these full LED taillights, although I'm surprised BMW does not do sequential LEDs. You have this very tasteful carbon fiber lip spoiler that you get with the carbon fiber package. And then the menacing exhaust with the carbon fiber rear diffuser, again, all part of that with the black painted exhaust. It sounds phenomenal. Let's go ahead and fire it up so you guys can hear how it sounds. Gotta love a proper BMW straight six. I have to say this car sounds really, really sexy. Now opening up the trunk, I do like how it's a power opening and closing trunk and the seats actually fold down in like a 40, 20, 40 manner, which is nice. There was a time where you couldn't get a sports sedan with fold down seats and cargo space back here is fine. It's rated at 13 cubic feet. Obviously it would be nice if BMW would offer the M4 as a Grand Coupe configuration. They do offer an M4 Coupe and a convertible, but not as the four door Grand Coupe. Um, when you look over here on the sides, you can see there is a little bit of storage to the sides. And then if I can get my finger underneath there, you can see the battery lives back here. There is no spare tire. This car instead will use run flat tires. So once you move past the crazy bright yellow color, let me show you guys the interior where it's also equally polarizing. Uh, here's the key fob for the vehicle. This is BMW's typical smart key access system. You can also use a digital key where, they can, where you can use a key card as a key fob. Uh, the vehicle also has this ability to where it'll lock as you walk away, but it also will unlock as you approach the vehicle when you have the key fob on you. So I think that's a great feature to have. And wow, guys, look at this interior color combination. The, the, uh, the yellow color, of course, with the Yaz Merino blue interior with the contrasting stitching and also the yellow accents. And we also have the BMW racing seats. You can see these seats are designed to literally keep you in place when you are, when you are driving on a racetrack or on your favorite twisty back roads. The seats look amazing and this M3 badge here also lights up whenever the dome lights are on in the vehicle. It just gives you a really like race car feel and a premium ambiance. Now, obviously the dashboard and the steering wheel uh, looks pretty similar to like an M340i with slight differences. Of course, the steering wheel is a fatter rim, but these seats literally make the car. They are the best performance seats that I've tested all year, way better than the Porsche seats and way better than what I've tested in some other competitors. Just make sure that you try the seats out before you sign on the line because they are constricting if you guys are of wider frame, or I'll just go ahead and say it, if you're fat, you're not gonna fit in these seats very well. Now the seats themselves are heated. You can't get cooled seats on this particular seat. You have to downgrade to the standard seats. You can see they do offer, I believe, uh, a 10-way power adjustment. Although no adjustable lumbar, you can, however, squeeze the bolsters in and out to make this area tighter. This, however, is fixed. Uh, with that carbon fiber area that's in your crotch zone. You can see the Yaz Marina Blue continues on with the extended full merino leather. It's completely leather stitched over here on the door panels. Down here it is a hard touch injection molded plastic that reminds you that this is just a three series to start with, but you can see you have two person memory seats. You have high quality power window controls with power folding mirrors. These are one touch auto up. And you can see my tester also has the Harman Kardon stereo for like an extra 900 bucks. It sounds pretty good, but you're gonna be listening to that engine most of the time anyways. Now, once you get inside this cabin, you can see this makes it a little bit awkward. If you guys have fat thighs, this is gonna be a little bit of a tight squeeze. Um, and it also makes it kind of annoying to get in and out of this car. But once you're in the seats, my God, are they comfortable. And then as I shut the door, the door has an amazingly solid sounding thunk, which reminds you you're in a very, very exquisitely engineered uh, German vehicle. Now looking at the uh, rest of this dash, you can see it's pretty similar to the last three series that I've shown you. The start stop button is right here by the shifter. And then when you fire the vehicle up, you can hear it has the typical BMW noises and sounds. The uh, six cylinder engine, as I put it into its M mode here, you can hear it, it wakes up as soon as you push that button. 
<laughs> oh my. Really great sound. Not quite as visceral as the last Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. However, the engine is very flexible. It revs all the way up to that 7,500 RPM redline and it keeps pulling as you do that. Now, the rest of the cabin, I've shown you guys this interior a few times, but I just wanna touch base again and remind you just how beautiful these seats are with the blue interior. This one here has the full merino leather. So you have real leather stitching along the entire dashboard on the upper portion. You can see there's a heads up display. You have the latest, or technically not the latest, this is iDrive 7.0 instead of iDrive 8.0. It does include a touch screen and includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is nice. You can see it takes up the entire screen there, although there is some black plastic over here. This is where the gesture controls are for the sensor. You have their live cockpit professional with a 12 inch display here and a 10 and a quarter inch display here. This screen here needs to be a little bit more adjustable. I haven't been in the newest BMWs with their iDrive 8, but I know that they have made that improvement. So I'll be looking forward to testing that in the new i4 and the iX. You can see the M1 and M2 button. This is essentially a customizable drive mode that's selectable. You can program exactly how you want your drive settings to be. M1, I have it as kind of like sport. This is like sport plus. You have carbon fiber paddle shifters and more carbon fiber on the steering wheel. These are mounted, of course, on the actual wheel instead of the column. Uh, and uh, the rest of the interior, you can see um, you have dual zone climate control, heated seats over here. This can turns on, on and off your driver assistance stuff. And then this unique shifter that you get with the M model, as you can see, it's in park right now, which you access by pushing that button, kick it to the left and then push forward to go into reverse. You can see there's your full top down 360 camera. It has good resolution, good quality. It also has their backup assistance. Uh, which is nice and then to go into drive you basically kick it over to the right to go to drive and then push for that p button to go to park there's also a couple of buttons here where you can adjust the m mode your setup you can turn on and off the noisy exhaust there's your electronic parking brake over here and then you have your iDrive controller here and then if you forget this again reminds you that you're driving an m3 competition there's a nice wireless phone charging pad over there usb and cup holders nice padded armrest over here with a good amount of storage in there with a USB-C charging port. My tester obviously doesn't have a sunroof because of the carbon fiber roof, but you do have LED lighting in the cabin. And you can see here in the glove box, it's pretty big actually. It's not a bin, or it's a bin style, it's stamped and it's lined with felt. So overall the cabin feels pretty snug in here, but it also feels very purpose built. Has all the latest tech that you'd want uh, in today's modern cars along with a good stereo. And it also has a really unique pre unique premium look with interchangeable ambient lighting in here where you can match uh, literally the blue interior of this wonderful uh, color combination that my tester has. Let's check out the back seat really quick. You can see there's the back of those carbon fiber racing bucket seats where it looks really great. However, it does make you lose the storage pockets, obviously. And you can see the Yaz Marina Blue with the yellow stitching and the contrast piping, that's all carried over into the back seats, which again, make this interior look very special along with the door panels. BMW says there's about 35 and a half inches of legroom back here, which is about the same as what you'd find in something like a Honda Civic. So uh, it is a mid-sized car on the outside, but it's a compact car on the inside, but this is more room than the Audi S or S4, S4 that I tested, which technically is a class below and the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. You can see there's rear seat air vents back here. No heated back seats. I'm surprised my, my tester is missing that. You have two USB-C charging ports, your own rear seat climate control area, which is nice. As I mentioned earlier, nice materials back here. The carbon fiber buckets just look fantastic. You have LED lighting over here. And then BMW does give you a little fold down over here. It's not technically an armrest. It's just kind of like a ski pass through. I'm actually surprised that there is no armrest here. That would be nice, but you can, I guess, fold that, out, fold that down and use it as a makeshift armrest. So this is quite a change of environment from the first time that I drove the M3 competition with all wheel drive. It is basically the start of winter. We are driving around an M3 with all wheel drive, which should be a wonderful thing when it's cold out and if there's, if there's gonna be any snow. However, BMW delivered the car to me with summer performance tires on, so, we're going to be testing out the limits of traction, obviously, when you have cold tires that don't, or that summer tires that don't like the cold. It is about 38 degrees out here right now, so I'm going to leave basically it in all-wheel drive all the time because this car has over 500 horsepower and it's on summers. So let's go ahead and see what this is like to launch. You turn the stability control off into its Sport Plus mode, build up the brake. <laughs> Even on summer tires, I just got 3.42 seconds, which is bang on with what BMW claims this car will get. And this is on summer tires where it's 38 degrees outside. Now, I actually really was happy that 
it didn't actually spin the front tires or get sideways at all, even though this is a rear drive biased car. But boy, is this thing fast. Now, I, is it faster than a Model 3 Performance? Without having the car here to test back to back, I can't say, but it definitely feels a lot faster than its 503 horsepower would suggest. It sounds really good too. BMW always knows how to do a really great straight six, but this noise here, this noise is fantastic. It is a lovely noise. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> 3.4 seconds again. Again. So this thing will crack off 3.4 seconds all day long, and I'm also going slightly uphill there. This is a 1% incline. So this car should be able to do quicker than the 3.4 that BMW is claiming, considering the fact that I'm driving it in the cold, going slightly uphill where it's sl slipping a little bit. I can feel the front tires struggling for grip as the system tries to shuffle power around, but it is just a, a phenomenal car. This thing should be able to smoke a lot of those fast EVs, maybe not up to 60, but as you as your speeds cl pass, climb past 60, you really feel the power of this car. It feels like it will keep pulling all the way to the 200 mile per hour top or indicator on the speedo. I believe the top speed of this car is like 190 something. But the cool thing about the M3 is I can take it out of the M2 mode, which is the sport sport mode here. It'll go into like a more of a touring mode here. The suspension still is relatively harsh. This car has adaptive dampers, but we're still running on, you know, 20 inch wheels for this car on Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires in 38 degree weather. So you can feel a little bit harshness. The steering also gets noticeably lighter in just normal mode, but it, you can feel, you can see how quick it is. The steering of this car changes direction so fast with authority. With a quick push of this button here, you can hear the exhaust wakes up. The steering gets noticeably heavier. The transmission gets far more aggressive. The engine also gets louder because of the active exhaust. This car just feels like a race car, just like the rear drive model that I drove back home a couple months ago. The all wheel drive model does not disappoint here. Oh God. <laughs> so much power, so much precision, so much grip. This is one of the best handling cars that I've driven this year. It literally feels like I'm driving a sports car or more like a race car. It is the best handling sports sedan that I've driven all year. This basically feels just like the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio, but you get a more responsive engine, you get a more responsive transmission. It doesn't sound quite as good as the Alfa. The Alfa just sounds amazing and nasty with those shifts. But this has that eagerness, that wow factor that I associate with BMWs. And it's nice to see BMW has found that back because they were losing it for the longest time. I'm like scared to put my foot down here because it's so cold outside and I can feel the front tires fighting for traction. I can feel the rear stepping out. This car obviously has a full rear drive mode, which I won't use right now because it's not the best conditions and I don't have an empty parking lot to do drifts in. But, you know, through this corner, I drive this corner a lot, this, this road a lot when I'm doing my reviews. And this is so fantastic in the curves. Like, the suspension feels nice and firm. The body feels nice and firm. The steering is so direct and fast. The car just feels like it's on rails. It's grip for days. You know, it has a visceral feel to it. And that's what I'm gonna miss about cars like this because I haven't driven a car like the new BMW i4 M50i, which a lot of people say from my colleagues that you have to drive that car because it's probably the one that's gonna be better than an M3 on a daily basis. And I, I don't disagree with them. Electric is better in terms of daily driving, but in terms of actually driving, going to the track, I would argue that this is probably better. It's got the mechanical noises, it's got the visceral noises, it's got the handling dynamics, it's got the chassis dynamics. It's got a look that also just screams, look at me. I mean, I love this color combination. I love the Sao Paulo yellow with this, this uh, Yaz Merino blue interior, interior with the yellow accents and these amazing Recaro or racing seats. I will say that these seats are the best racing seats that I've tried. Now, keep in mind, you do need to try the seats on this model just before you decide, because if you guys have fat legs or, or a wide frame, you're not gonna fit in these seats really well. In fact, a lot of the, the little crotch area here where there's this like hard carbon fiber, it is a pain in the ass to get in and out of this car without fear of crushing your balls. Sorry, I had to say that for if you're a guy, but uh, it is, quite a challenge to get in and out of if you're not used to it. But once you're sitting in the seat, they hold you in place so nicely. The seats are heated. You just feel like you're stuck in the seat. You're not gonna go anywhere even if you start driving this thing hard around some corners. 
And the visibility is also really good out of this car. You can see out of the front really well, the rear really well. My tester does have blind spot monitoring where there are cross traffic alert, but it's missing, of course, BMW's driver assistance professional package. Oh my God, what an amazing car. <laughs> now in terms of fuel economy, in my week's worth of testing, I've been averaging about 17 MPG, which is actually not too horrible. It's pretty similar to the rear drive model. You'll get about 300 miles of range on a full tank and you better put premium in this car. You need to put premium in it. But gosh, I have a newfound respect for BMW. It all of course started when I first, dri when I first drove the rear drive model. I've driven the manual. Now I've also spent a week with the competition with all wheel drive. This is the one to get, even though you can't get it with a stick from the grip from the performance, from the handling, you can still put it in rear drive mode. It is one amazing machine that uh, reminds everybody that this is a BMW and they do know how to build the ultimate driving machine, regardless of what you think of the looks. So after spending a full week with the latest M3 with the company's X-Drive all-wheel drive system, I'm pretty happy to confirm that this car literally reminds you that BMW builds the ultimate driving machines. It is one seriously fast car that feels like it's driving on rails. It feels like a race car that's built for the road that's also disguised as a more practical four-door sports sedan, although it would be nice if BMW would offer this vehicle as the M4 Grand Coupe. Just like the rear drive model, the engine is ferocious. It easily makes way more power than its numbers would suggest. It also has a a wonderful eight-speed auto that essentially reads your minds. It downshifts and it upshifts so quickly and it sounds fantastic doing so. And if only BMW had loaned me the car with uh, proper winter tires or all-season tires as opposed to the summers out here in this cold weather, I would have really liked to test out the drift capabilities of this vehicle. I'll have to save that for another time. But really, as a daily driver, it still excels. I'm just not entirely sure if it's something that I would personally want to have as a daily driver. I mean, that's the thing about the Tesla Model 3 or these fast electric sedans. They just make better daily drivers. What this car essentially feels like to me is a weekend track toy car. It feels so sharp. It feels so direct. It is literally the best handling sports sedan that I've driven all year. It also has one of the best sounding engines and it's just ferocious. It accelerates with relentless authority and zero to 60 in 3.4 seconds matches BMW's claims. It probably is faster when I actually uh, drive the car out in warmer uh, temperatures with these uh, wonderful summer tires. But really what it comes down to is the M3's price because this car has gotten so ridiculously expensive over the years. It's not even funny. This car starts at just under $70,000 for the base M3 with the six speed manual transmission. That's the only way you can get the base model with a manual. Add uh, about $4,000 if you guys want to go to the all wheel or the competition model, which adds like another 30 horsepower. That's that starts at around $72,000, which uh, again, $72,000 doesn't sound like much. I'm sorry, it's about $3,000 more. Now add four grand, however, if you guys want all wheel drive. This model here starts at 76.9. My tester, of course, with all the carbon fiber, the extra color, the upgraded Recaro or racing seats. This one here stickers for about $95,000, nearly $100,000 for an M3 is absolutely stupid bunny. It just kind of shows how just how expensive cars like this have become. However, if you can afford all that extra coin, you are literally getting a sports car, a race car with four doors that you can truly daily drive and take it to the racetrack. However, I'm just not entirely sure it's better to daily drive this or an all electric sedan. Feel free to let me know in the comment section below. But regardless, once you guys get kind of get past the crazy front end styling of this car, which I'm already starting to forget about because the car is so good, the rest of it is, uh, it really is a reminder that BMW knows how to build the ultimate driving machine. So with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2022 BMW M3 competition with xDrive. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.